Hey, how's it going everyone? This is Etho, and welcome back guys to our Let's Play series. How you doing? If you're in a good mood, I'm about to wreck it. That's right, I have something very serious to talk to you about. <laughs> please, please keep an open mind about this, alright? It's a topic near and dear to my heart, and I'm entitled to my own, o my own opinion, as all of us are. Even though I'm in the minority here, please be respectful, okay? I'm, of course, talking about pig power, okay? Pig power is one of those taboos in society. You know, we have these pigs in our world. They just roam around free all day, not a care in the world, not doing anything for society. Just, I mean, look at them. Oh, I hate you. I mean, uh, yeah, so what we're going to do, like we have horsepower, right? We put horses to work. Nobody's got a problem with that. But then we just let the pigs ro roam free. We should put them to work too. Yeah, so basically what we're going to do here, we're going to look at a couple ideas on how we might use the pig AI in this game. <laughs> uh, the first thing I wanted to show you here is a pretty good example. Like, you'll notice he follows me pre even when I'm pretty far away here. As long as I have the carrot selected, if I unselect it, he loses interest, right? So you can use them for tracking your player as like an invisible switch as well in redstone. Like he's, he just kind of stays put otherwise, but then if he sees you, he stays right on you. Like he will not break that focus unless you get too far away and then, uh, and then he loses it. It takes a little bit of time for him to regain its, its random. But it usually doesn't take too long. This time, a little bit more so. Actually, it's taking a really long time. Okay, there we go. <laughs> sometimes it's like instant. Sometimes it takes a bit of time. And... Uh-oh. I thought it was faster for some reason. Hello, Mr. Pig. So lazy. We should just remove them from society, honestly. Oh, hey, you found me quickly. Uh, the other thing I stumbled across, which I didn't know before, like, you know how you can use dirt for piano with a note block, wood for uh, guitar, stone is, I think, drums? Uh, turns out you can, you can do this with pressure plates directly. Like, if you have a stone pressure plate, it does uh, drums. If you have wood, it's guitar, and I think iron and gold are piano. So that's kind of a cool way of doing this, and then since a pig is only one tall, he can inactivate three different instruments without really using any redstone. So here's what I'm considering though, guys. You know how I always have steak in my hot bar? Like, usually fourth or fifth slot here is where I like to keep it. Um, I might switch over to eating carrots. Which isn't as good of a food, it's true, but if I do that, I can activate redstone wirelessly if we set up pig switches and stuff. <laughs> so I, I think that might be a cool thing. We'll have to do some experiments here, though. Let's first see what we can do with this, if we can make a reliable pig switch first. Alright, so we're going to take this guy over to here. Let's get an idea of how far this works as well. Come on. Alright, so we're going to send this guy down here. Okay. And can you see me from up from up here still? Let's see if he'll track us. I think he should. Mr. Pig? Yeah, he's, he can see us. Okay, let's go up a little bit. Let's see how far until he loses focus. Oh, but I unselected it. Darn it. <laughs> okay, let's build like a staircase. We'll go up step by step so we don't have to keep getting his attention. Alright. Mr. Pig. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to go up one step. Still sees us. Good. Go up another one. Still sees us. Now, now we lost them. Okay, so this is the absolute limit over here, which is one, two, three, I'm guessing it's eight. 
four, five, six, seven, eight-ish. I'll call it eight. <laughs> so up to eight blocks away, ninth, if, nine if you count the pig itself, uh, we can get his attention. And that works through walls and stuff. Like if he can't pathfind towards us, it still works, is what I'm trying to say. All right, double check that. Yeah, so he'll follow us no matter where we put him. As long as we're within eight blocks of us, he can do stuff. Okay, so if we were to do this, let's let's set up an example here. Let's pretend there's a wall here. The pig is hidden inside the wall. And when we come up this hallway, we want a door to open or something. So we'll, we'll just use a light to represent the door. All right. How reliably do you think we could get this to work? I have no idea. Because <laughs> we don't want the pig opening the door just randomly on its own, for one thing. We only want it to happen when we have the carrot selected. And ideally, as quickly as possible, too. So we would probably want the pig just, like, resting in a one-by-one -one block area or something, if I was to guess. Let's build this up so he can't jump over. All right, so you're very cooperative. I like you. Getting shoved around, you're not biting me or anything. It's great. Okay. <laughs> and then maybe water. Let's let's see if he can fight the currents first off. Okay. And he's only one tall, so maybe we can do this even. We'll see. So if I have the the carrot, no, he cannot escape that. Oh. Okay. What if we get rid of the blocks above? How about now? No, really? Okay. <laughs> Uh-oh. I was hoping that would work. Okay, so if I select the carrot, will you go through the water? Oh, it does. Okay, good. The other thing I want to see, though, is if... Actually, this is dangerous, right? Because if I unselect it, he's going to die. <laughs> um, Pig, you better get out of there quickly. See me. No! 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 <laughs> oh, darn it. Um, well, we got one left there. I actually don't have any pigs in my world. I think we have one at the coarse fruit farm here, too. I better breed some more before I, I kill the last two. Yes, yes, I know you're very excited. This is your big day. Oh! <laughs> and that's... Oh, he jumped. He actually made it across. Aha, uh -huh. I think I have a good idea now. This might actually work. What we're going to do is get the pig into position, into the water. There we go. Very good. And... Yeah, I think I think we can do this. He's jumping, though. What we want to do is fence. Fence. <laughs> Let me place the fence, you stupid pig. Uh, here, let's do that. So he stops jumping. All right, this is a bit tricky. But it should work. And then, if we activate this this piston, it'll push the fence down into the pig. Then we can put a pressure plate on top. And as long as we seal this off, the pig should never pathfind out of here. Right? No reason to go anywhere. Get rid of our piston up here. All right. I think that's good. So the pig is just going to stay there. I'm pretty sure. I don't think he'll go to the water, but we'll watch it for a second just to be sure. But if I have the carrot then, he's going to activate the pressure plate. Aha! <laughs> and that's kind of the key. And as soon as we unselect it, he should stop activating it. Right? Hasn't seen us yet. He's thinking about us. It's taking him a long time this time. Uh-oh. There we go. Okay, so as soon as we let go, he stops. Okay, so what we would have to do then is get the signal out of here. I wonder... Like, if we use the repeater, he might be able to escape then. That wouldn't be good. Let's, let's try it, though. Don't, don't get out. Nope, nope. You can't come here. <laughs> the repeater has a little bit of a hitbox, so I don't know if he'll try to get out of that on his own. 
There's lots of nice grass out here. Do you want to come see it? Ah, he is trying to get out. Okay. Um, we can't do it this way then. They won't believe me if you don't do it, pig. Come on, just go in the water. Just pretend I'm not recording. You did it before. <laughs> there, there, he just did it. He did it. Proof. I got proof on camera. Aha. I tricked you. He thought I wasn't recording, but I really was. So that took a long time, but you can see, even though I put a stair in there, and these two blocks are water, he still tries to pathfind into these two water blocks, which is a problem, because in order to make a reliable switch, we don't want it activating randomly on its own. We only want it to happen when we have a carrot selected, right? So we have a slight problem with this design. Uh, I did figure out a way we could get the redstone signal out of here, though, if we wanted to use this, this method. Basically, we can't get it out of the sides without opening up the walls, so we would have to, like, drop her into a hopper. <laughs> it's not a pretty method, but it would work. And then, like, have a comparator detect when something goes in there. All right, so we have an item in here. And then when the pig activates it, here, let's put a light down, too. There. This is how we could detect it. Um, but yeah, that is an issue. I really don't know what to do about that because the beautiful thing about this is it was self-resetting. As soon as the pig would go into the water, he would get pushed back. If we get rid of it, he's not going to move at all. Okay, I got a new idea, guys. Let's try something here. We might be able to do it with minecarts. I remember something odd about mobs in minecarts now. <laughs> okay, one of you. I don't care who. Age before beauty. Haha, -ha, no. <laughs> oh wait, no, that means I'm old. Oh, darn it. I got the I got them mixed up. Somebody go in the stupid minecarts. Come on. It's not supposed to be this difficult. All they have to do is touch it, I think. Oh, there we go. We got one. Ha ha. We got the baby. So, now that we got him trapped... Oh, that doesn't look good. <laughs> he already moved. Um, this might not work, actually. I think it has the same problem where even though he's in a minecart, he's randomly seeing these two blocks. But we'll try it. We'll just make sure. I'm going to totally seal it up, all corners and everything. Alright. So if we select a carrot, he can move, right? That's good. They pathfind towards you, or track you. Which is what I was hoping for. I'm going to watch it for a second. Why are you doing that? Stop moving. Hmm. <laughs> Let me just watch him for a second. I think he's going to move on his own, though. Yeah, there we go. Darn it! Um. Okay, I'll have to think of another idea, then. Okay, there we go. You, you see that? Aw, oh, really? I tell you what, guys, I'm a little sad now. I thought I had a perfect method figured out here. I thought it was perfect. <laughs> I AFK'd here for 10 minutes without any problems. Yeah, because you see what he does. He usually only gets to the second one, and then it fails. It's only, I think, if it fails, and then he tries again, it, like, right after, before the minecart rolls down, can he get higher than that? So it's extremely rare. I have AFK'd here 10 minutes, left 64 dirt in here. And when I came back, it was all there. Then I started recording, and it failed the first time. <laughs> uh huh. But this is good enough. I think I'll use it. So I figured something out with the carrots, too. It seems when you select them, they, the pig instantly follows you. So check this out. Always. It always works. But after you deselect it, there's a cooldown timer, so the pig's going to ignore me for, you know, I never did time it, but I'm guessing it's about 15 seconds or so. Um, but this is good enough that I think we can use it. 
And I don't know if it's close enough. I kind of built it a little far away here, but we'll try. Yeah, you, you hear that? He rolled up the hill. So I think I think it's pretty pretty much good. Unless you guys can think of a way of making it even better, I'm going to say this is the best you can do. And actually, now that I think of it, after saying that, <laughs> you know, if we just go up one more to a fourth one, I want this as compact as possible too, of course. But if we go one more block, make it a little bit bigger, I don't think the pig will reach this, or extremely, extremely rarely. Yeah, this is how I'm going to build it. Awesome. So now we know how to make a pig switch that seems fairly reliable. I'm going to set some up in the man cave, or at least one, so we can try it on something like a door or something, just to try it out. Uh, before we do that, though, just to get some variety in this episode, <laughs> as much as I love pig power, uh, maybe I'll just show you this. So I went through this path finally and mixed in some cobblestone because uh, it was all gravel before and I didn't like how that looked. So I mixed in some cobblestone and man, I tell you, that makes a big difference. I like it a lot more, right? You know, just a little bit of cobblestone, a little bit of variety makes a big difference. I also went through this area again, uh, added some more flowers and bushes. Um, instead of having torches all over the place, I tried putting uh, torches on little fences here, like tiki torches. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good look or not. I haven't quite got used to it yet myself. But it just goes along the path, and it, it does a pretty good job at nighttime too. Uh, what else did I do? Uh, added a, f a random root here from the tree over there, and some some coarse dirt in a few places just to mix it up a bit as well. Uh, we got a beet garden over here, <laughs> just three beets, and some vines on this tree. Or I think I did that last time, but they finally grew. Coarse dirt around it, a mushroom, log pile, just a couple more details. And I think this area looks pretty good now, right? Some people, some of you guys said I shouldn't have built this here because it blocks the view of uh, you've been ethoed over there, but I think it's fine. We can still see it over here very well. All right, guys, I'm going to try hook up some big power to this door over here in the lab. This is a perfect candidate for it because um, there's no button or pressure plate on this side of the door. I can't close it once I'm on this side. I have to go back and then close it with this button. So it's not a very good door as it is. <laughs> to get a button on this side for pressure plates, I would have to like put redstone somewhere where we can see it. Like if a button's here, I need redstone here. Um, but if we do pig power, since it's hidden in the wall, uh, we won't see it and it should work, I hope, if there's enough space back here. Okay, so here we go, everyone. We have pig power installed on that door. So now, if we walk up to it with a sword or whatever in our hand, nothing happens. All right, that's what you would expect. If we do it with a carrot in, in hand, our key card, then big power activates. <laughs> Pretty cool. Kind of hang around, it'll close. And then we can go on with our, our day, and the door is closed, right? There's a 15 second or 20 second, whatever it is, time before we can activate it again, though. But by now, enough time has probably passed. So if we walk up with the carrots. Big power! <laughs> uh huh. So that's, that's the kind of idea to it. I think it's cool. It uh, isn't perfect, though, I have to say. Sometimes he activates it when I don't have a carrot in hand, just on his own, and I don't know why, or if there's any way to make it better. Um, oh, he did it already. Man, I don't know what's, what the deal is. Why does he want to go there? I have no idea. Most of the time, like in that other area, he didn't seem to do it as much. So something with this pathfinding in this area makes them more likely to, to go to the top there. I guess there's more more places he can go? I don't know. I'm watching you, pig. I know you're going to do it again. 
Okay, he's not doing it again. <laughs> it's pretty rare, but I would like it to be perfect. I just don't know how to do it. Oh, oh. Oh, baby. Aw. <laughs> I, I want to get the mending and frost walking enchantments so bad, but I just don't like fishing very much. I have to force myself to do it. Oh, a name tag. Hello. Oh, man, I love fishing. It's so cool. <laughs> you get name tags for free? I've never gotten a name tag, I don't think. I think that was my first time. I, I don't do a lot of fishing, though. It's true. We're not going to fish for... Well, yeah, we are going to fish the rest of this episode because it's the end of the episode, guys. We're going to call it here for today. Oh. <gasps> oh, this is it. Mending three. Nope. Okay. <laughs> Not bad, though. Not bad. Uh, yeah, I did more of a discovery episode today because I didn't have as much time to record. Hope you enjoyed it regardless. Just wanted to get one out for you for the weekend. Um... Here is the comment for today, though. Oh, a fish was coming. I shouldn't have stopped. First one says, Etho, you should start using a shield. I might have talked about this already. I'm not sure. But, you know, I want to use a shield. I like the concept of shields. It just takes up too much of the screen. I Like, the only way I would ever use it in my Let's Play here is if I edited it. Edited it <laughs> to be, like, transparent and maybe just see the the border around it like you know the wood part there I want that gone so I can see through it um, but that means not being entirely entirely vanilla which we've always been so I don't know well I say that I say that I have a confession to make I have oh never mind <laughs> I thought this was selected um, I do have a resource pack that I made myself that adds one sound file to the game. But I don't have it equipped, apparently. Anyways. Um, whoop, there we go. But yeah, that's my, my gripe with the shield. The other comment says... It says, I don't want to be rude, but people who don't like redstone can go to another channel. It's very sad that you're adjusting to that audience so bad and aren't true to yourself anymore. You are the redstone genius of Minecraft. Why would you let the mainstream viewership change the way you do these videos? I love redstone projects most out of all content on this channel. And every time you do something with it, and I actually enjoy it, every time you say that many people don't like it, you are basically bashing own content. Minecraft done technical. Stay yourself. Keep up the great work. Mm-hmm. So I, I, see what, I see what you're saying. And yeah, I know what you mean. Um, but we, you know, we do redstone like every episode still. <laughs> I don't think I veered off too much from what I do or did in the past, right? This is still, I feel like we do a lot of technical stuff still. I do glance over some redstone, I know, but some of it isn't particularly interesting or, you know, like the Simon game, I glanced over a little bit last episode because we already spent 10 minutes on it. And the other part of it was not too exciting, to be honest. Um, <laughs> basically just making a lot of connections and stuff and not really something easy to record. And some of it I plan on changing because I'm not happy with it. So, I, you know, I show it, then I'd have to tear it down and redo it anyway. So, th yeah. I don't know. <laughs> like, we do a lot of redstone. And I, whenever I discover something new or find anything interesting, I for sure tell you guys. So that's that's my thoughts on that. And I mean, come on, this content is great. Look at this. Oh, we got another one. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Uh, oh, yeah, I do have a couple other things to tell you. First off, I... I got the pigs in here now. This is the rabbit farm, but I brought over a couple pigs. So if we want to do more pig power, we now have a way of getting them. Um, also, I have playlists added. I updated the playlists on my YouTube channel. Uh, if I missed any series, please let me know, and I'll try add them as well. And they should be auto-updating now. So for Etho Plays Minecraft, every time I put up a new episode, it should automatically find it and add it to the playlist which is cool. Um, 
And what else? Uh, I think we'll call it here for today. <laughs> I think I had one or two other things to say, but yeah, can't think of it off the top of my head now. So thank you for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next one. See you later. Bye-bye.